Good morning, and thank you for joining me on another edition about teaching the Lord's Holy Word. Please bow with me as we welcome in the Holy Spirit. Dear Lord, we just want to bless your holy and divine name. We ask that your presence fall fresh upon us right now in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus. Dear Lord, we just want to invite in the Holy Spirit so someone's soul can be saved, rescued, and delivered. Dear Lord, we just want to praise you for eternity. In the name of Jesus, by the blood, we pray, amen. So today, we will be conversing about money and money management within the Christian journey. Now, I am not a prosperity teacher. However, we will be conversing about this because this is a important topic in contemporary society as we see it today. <clears throat> so please turn with me to 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 5 through 10. And it reads as thus, in constant friction between people of corrupt mind who have been robbed of the truth and who think that godliness is a means to financial gain. But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we bought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. For those who want to get rich fall into temptation and trap into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Our key verse today, for the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. So I wanted you guys to take home three important topics today, three important take home key points for today and it is allow God's wisdom to manifest in your life by worshiping the Lord and remember that praise equals blessings. Praise and obedience equals blessings. Number two, use your resources to worship God and allow him to send blessings. And number three, focus on strategy to receive your blessings. So as we analyze modern day society, we see that the Bureau of Labor Statistics has reported on December 4th that unemployment is around 6.7%. A lot of people have lost their jobs because of the virus and a lot of businesses is not reopened. Criminal justice and education affect the economy. More people are incarcerated in the US than all the countries in the world combined. As of June 2020, 2.12 million people were incarcerated. That is 655 people per 100,000 of incarceration for frivolous crimes. Now, we say all this is because people who are incarcerated, it's hard for them to integrate back into society. You can't vote. You can't get a job. When you're filling out the job application, it asks you, if you've been a recent felon or if you had any past criminal charges, how is a person supposed to integrate back into society when they don't have the proper resources in order to do so? Some people even go back to jail because they need a place to sleep, something to eat, and something to wear. Now, the Bible has over 2,000 verses about money. And I'm not a prosperity teacher, but we must understand that we have to really study our communities and understand the hardships of the people. And how do we understand the hardships of the people if we're leaving some of the people out high and dry? So as we go back to verse five and it says, and constant friction between the people of corrupt mind who have been robbed of the truth and think that godliness is a means to financial gain. So godliness as a means to financial gain. So as you as a Christian believer, what will you do in order to integrate people who were incarcerated for frivolous crimes or crimes that they didn't even commit back into society? See, most people who are around my age resort to things that are ungodly. 
Maybe they start selling drugs. Maybe they start stealing, you know. They're selling dime packs on the side of the street. Maybe a girl becomes a prostitute and starts selling her body. Whatever it takes to get money because they can't integrate into society or society has not allowed them to get to a certain level of wealth deemed appropriate for survival. So you have people in the hood that think the only way that they can survive is cooking up crack on the stove. Or you have people in more affluent communities who believe that the only way they can survive is by implementing a succinct Ponzi scheme. Or maybe they're utilizing trading techniques that allows one currency to be traded for another, but you know in the back of your head that the currency you just traded for will be devalued at a certain date. So these are all the unscrupulous things that people resort to in order to get a check. You know, young people refer to it now as demon time. And they do anything and everything to get either money or just to have fun. But when we really analyze about getting money, having fun, and being happy in life, we have to examine what, what is happiness and how do you become content with what you have? So as we break down verse five, God wants to hand out wealth to those who can manage finances appropriately. So God doesn't want you to accumulate your wealth by doing things that hinder the advancement of his people. So if you're a drug dealer, do you really think you're going to flourish in the kingdom of God? Or, you know, maybe you're a blue collar worker or, or a white collar worker and you're doing some type of crime at your job. Maybe you, you change some numbers in your data system so you can ensure that you get yourself that bonus as a blue collar worker. Or maybe you're a white collar worker and you're running that Ponzi scheme. Or maybe you're a forex trader and doing the black hat box trading. And even though that you know, gambling and forex trading is legal. God knows all, sees all, and hears all. So you really got to understand what you're doing when you're executing these processes within society to gain your wealth. Because just as fast as you can get that wealth, God will take it away. The wealth of the unjust people on earth will be the wealth of the righteous in heaven. I say that again. The wealth of the unjust people on earth will be the wealth of the righteous in heaven. So when we really focus on verse five and it says, think that godliness is a means to financial gain, just because you believe in God does not mean God will bless you with good finances. So what do you do? in order to avoid selling drugs, in order to stop being that unscrupulous person at your job? The answer is with several statues within the Bible that Jesus has promulgated to us. And we can analyze Malachi chapter three, verse 10, and it says, bring the whole tide into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me. In this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there would not be room enough to store it. Another one to examine Luke 6, 38. Give, and it will be given unto you a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap for it. With the measure you use, it will be measured to you. And Proverbs Three and nine says, honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. So it is important for you to understand 
that in order for you to gain finances in the appropriate manner and for your finances to have the correct amount of longevity in your life, you should be executing what we just read over in Malachi, Luke, and Proverbs. Are you giving the tithe unto the Lord? Are you giving that 10% time, talent, and treasure? I'm the Lord with your wealth. So don't get it confused with your tithe. You need to be giving money unto the Lord. And your wealth can be your assets as well, but we all know what's good. Verse 6. And verse 6 says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. So what does that mean? When God gives you a vision, assignment, or blessing, he will, you will not have to search for the funding to complete the project. So if God charges you with an assignment to go out and feed the clothes, feed the hungry and clothe the, the people and help out the sick, then he will give you everything you need in order to carry out and implement the tactics. You could just think of it as your project manager for the Lord. You do it on your job, you can do it for God too. And if you are obeying the Lord, it says in Genesis 45 and 18, and take your father and your households and come unto me, and I will give you all the good of the land of Egypt, and ye shall eat the fat of the land. So if you're doing everything that God has told you to do, fat of the land, metaphorically, you can deduce what that is. He's going to give you wealth. You have to understand that just because you don't have much doesn't mean that God will not bless you. You can't get depressed and start doing demonic things just because you don't have a lot. If you give what you have, the Lord will bless you. Read this quick little excerpt from Mark 12, 41 through 44. And Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth only a few cents. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others They gave out of their wealth, but she, out of poverty, put in everything she had to live on. So if you're giving unto the Lord from what you have, then you will be blessed. Just because you can't see it, you can't envision it right now, doesn't mean it's not coming. You have to evaluate yourself and ask the Lord, am I doing everything that I need to do in order to receive God's blessing? And we just went over three sustained things that you must do. And remember the three key take home points, allow God's wisdom to manifest in your life. Use your resources to worship God and focus on strategy to receive your blessings. So God's wisdom is very important when you're analyzing things in your life. Ecclesiastes 7 and 12 says, for wisdom is a defense and money is a defense, but the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. So wisdom will earn you money. And you have to understand that God is the source. And what he gives us are just the resources to sustain ourselves here on the earth. So your money, your cars, your clothes, your jobs, those are just all resources from the Lord, but God is the source. He is the source of all of your blessings. So if you want this to be your season of lucrative blessings, then follow the word of the Lord. Stop playing around. So as we keep going, verse seven, for we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. What what have you contributed to this world? What will your legacy be when you leave this world? 
People always look at, oh, he was the richest guy. What did he do? What did you do? What will you be remembered for when you rest your soul? What will you be remembered for when you approach the pearly gates of heaven? See, when God gives, you have a responsibility to execute and implement what he has said. To whom much is given, more is required. Luke 12 and 48, but the one who does not know and does things deserving punishment will be beaten with few blows from everyone who has been given much. Much will also be demanded in front. The one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. You got to understand that God is here to help you. But you got to be the individual that overcomes these societal things in order to just gain a check. Money is the root of all evil. Don't let the evil overcome you. Verse number eight, but if we have food and clothing, we'll be content with that. Don't let anything you have become an idol in your life. Don't let your money become a hidden idol. Hidden idol means you can't give it up. And your idol doesn't have to be your money. It could be your spouse, car, job, anything. Whatever you worship other than God will fail you. So if you're worshiping your job, your finances, your car, your boss, your spouse. Don't say nothing when y'all get a divorce. You wonder where it's coming from. You, you worshiping this guy? You worshiping this woman? Shoot. Idols, things that God has given you that you misconceive and have the wrong attitude about. You have to be the individual that has a clear vision. And how do you get that clear vision? You get that from God. You're asking him from wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. You have to maximize what God has given you and don't waste your talent or resource. Worship God with resources and profits. When you worship God with resources, you are signifying to God that you are worth more than what God has given you. So, you have to understand that you must praise God because when praises go up, blessings come down. And what does it say about utilizing what God has given you? Romans 12 and 6 through 8. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give genu generously. If it is to lead, then do diligently. If it is to show mercy, then do it cheerfully. The Lord is here with you. Utilize your talents. Maximize your talents. And that's how you will receive your blessings. Utilize your talents to uplift the Lord and praise the Lord. Because if you utilize your talents for demonic tendencies, your finances and your blessings will have no longevity. Verse number nine. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and are trapped into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. So we have to understand more money equals more temptation and additional haters. Don't let the hate bring you down. More money, more problems. I say bring it on because I got God. Y'all want to give me more money. That's fine. I know how to give to the needy. I know how to give to the poor. Don't let your prayer come from a sick, misguided mindset. I need to say that again. Don't let your prayer come from a sick, misguided mindset. Understand that when God gives you a blessing and he wants it to be for, for you, it's, it's not for somebody else. Don't pray to God and ask him to allow you to keep up with the Joneses. Are you practicing what God has taught us? Are you tithing? Are you giving to the poor? 
you have to get rid of that capitalist mindset. Like we can't help people just because they're in ruins. All these people in America should not be homeless. They got plenty of money here for it not to be one single homeless person in America. Now it does say that the poor will always be amongst us, but it don't mean that they can't have food and water. It don't mean that they can't have shelter. When there's people out here making billions of dollars, ridiculous. Deuteronomy 8 and 18, but remember the Lord God for it. It is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. Mm -hmm. And so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors as it is today. So God gives you the wealth. You're not going to go out there and get the wealth by yourself by doing devious things in order to get your finances up. That fast money doesn't last. No way. You have to understand that a lot of people try and do business everywhere. Business is not to be done in the church. You're not supposed to be trying to increase your finances in, in God's house. Matthew 21 and 12, 13 says, Jesus entered the temple course and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, my house will be called a house of prayer. We are making a den of robbers. So if you're going to the church, you're trying to run your Ponzi schemes on individuals, you need to stop, take a step back, and understand that it's not your time. God will promote you when it's time. And if you don't stop, your punishment will be something you can't overcome. And we're saying all this for you to really understand when you do business, do it with good intent. It is important for people to understand that God teaches us everything that we need to know. And the last one, verse 10. As we conclude, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. So we've given several examples. It is important for you to understand though that God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. As we come to a close, you have to understand that God is a jealous God. So if you're on demon time, as the young people call it, and you're doing anything to get a check or to have fun, then you need to reanalyze how you are executing the establishment of your life. You really need to focus. Matthew 6. 24 says, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Luke 16 and 13, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate one and love the other, or you will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. And the last one. Ecclesiastes 5 and 10, whoever loves money never has enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with their income. This too is meaningless. See, you cannot live life chasing after the dollar. Simple as that. Proverbs 22 and 16, one who oppresses the poor to increase his wealth and one who gives gifts to the rich, both come to poverty. So all these rich folks that don't give, or they just give to their friends, maybe they give to their dog, both come to poverty. And poverty may not be witnessed here on earth, but when it's time to go to heaven, and you can't walk on those streets of gold because you didn't know how to manage your money, 
be on earth. Mm. And this last one is very deep. So I want you guys to listen. Now listen, you rich people, weep and well because of the misery that is coming on you. Mm. Your wealth has rotted and your moths have eaten your clothes. Your gold and silver are corroded. Their corrosions will testify against you and eat your flesh like fire. You have hoarded wealth in the last days. Look, the wages you have failed to pay the workers who mow your fields are crying out against you. The cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord Almighty. You have lived on the earth in luxury and self-indulgence. You have fattened yourselves in the day of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered the innocent one who was not opposing you. So I say all this to say, really look, are you enslaving another individual? You have to look at contemporary society and look at, you know, someone like the Walmart guy, you know, paying his people seven bucks an hour and he's a billionaire. That ain't gonna fly with God. Do we need to reread the scripture? I mean, it's just very, you know, people can always say, hey, this is a capitalist society. We can, we can do this. It's legal. This is not what God would have us to do. Or if you're running that Ponzi scheme and you're not allocating the funds throughout the system, or maybe you're that black box trader and you're trading currency, knowing that the currency will be devalued, all this must stop. You got to, you got to understand that. God hasn't promoted you yet. God has not promoted you yet. But when God promotes you, nobody can take it from you. So remember, three key points for today. A lot of God's wisdom to manifest in your life by worshiping the Lord. Remember that praise equals blessings. So when you praise God, your blessings will come down. And you have to obey God and be obedient to his word. Use your resources to worship God and follow him to send blessings. And focus on strategy. And what is your strategy? We read about the strategy in Malachi, Luke, and Proverbs. What does it say in Malachi? Bring the whole tide into the storehouse. Luke, it says, give and it will be given unto you. Proverbs says, honor the Lord with your wealth. That's your strategy. So stop being that devious individual and focus on God and your blessings and your lucrative manifestations will become abundant in your life. Thank you and have a great day.